Hey everybody, this is Mr. Longo here, and I am going to teach you how to use your graphing calculator to graph a quadratic equation and find some important points. So, if you need to grab your graphing calculator, go do so. Otherwise, let's get moving. So, we're going to use our graphing calculator to not only graph it, but we are also going to list the vertex our y-intercept, our x-intercepts, if they have any, and along with the vertex, of course, you know, comes the axis of symmetry, which we will list at the same time. Um, and then we're also going to use our calculator to find some good points so we can sketch it out nicely. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click the y equals button of your graphing calculator. And you want to type in this equation. So we have 2 x squared plus 4x minus 3. And one little tip that I'm going to show you to make things easier for finding x-intercepts is we're going to type a 0 into y2. You'll see why when we get there. Um, but I can tell you that it makes finding the x-intercepts easier with your graph and calculator. And what you want to do is you want to click graph. Um, now, sometimes your graph looks really weird, and I want you to see that you can change the viewing window of your graphing calculator. So whenever you want to start out, a lot of times it's best to click zoom and then six, which is the standard window. Okay, so I wanted you to see what would happen if you have a funky window when you go. Now, in the next problem, we're going to talk about how you get that window. Um, but I just wanted you to see what you should do. So Zoom 6 will take you back to the standard window, and you can always change as you need to go. So our graph's going to look a little something like that. So we're not going to just go and swoop something and say, hey, I graphed it, we're done. No, we're going to get some good points. So there's a couple of ways to do that. First thing we need to do is find the vertex. Now the vertex is going to be either a maximum or a minimum you know that since this is down at the bottom, the vertex is at the bottom of this parabola, that's a minimum. So to find a minimum with our calculator, you press second, and then you go press the trace button, because right above it says that the second menu is calc, which means calculate the, and now you need to go select number three, which is the minimum. So you can scroll to it, or you can just click number three. So what your calculator is now asking you to do is go to the left bound. That means take your little spider or your little blinky guy and put it somewhere to the left of the vertex. Anywhere to the left is fine, and you just click Enter. Then your calculator is going to ask you to go to the right bound. So now you're going to take your spider and you're going to take him back to the right side. Somewhere on the right side of the vertex, and you click Enter. Now your calculator is going to ask you to guess. So I'm just going to go down to the bottom where it looks like the vertex is, and I'm going to guess. Now using all sorts of different math, it's going to calculate that your vertex is at negative 1, comma, negative 5. So our vertex is at negative 1, comma, negative 5, which means our axis of symmetry is x equals a negative 1. So we can go plot that point, negative 1, negative 5. And while you're at it, you can go ahead and graph your axis of symmetry. So that's how you find a vertex of a parabola using your graphing calculator. Another thing that we can do is find y-intercepts. Now, y-intercepts are extremely simple to do. Um, all you have to do is look at your table. So you click the second button, and you go click the graph button. And instead of giving you a graph, it's going to give you a table. Now remember, a y-intercept is always when x is 0. So all you have to do is go to where x is 0 and look at your y value. So your y-intercept is at 0, comma, negative 3. And we can go graph that right here, 0, comma, negative 3. Now, I wanted to show you the table anyway. Because when you're graphing these, your teacher's going to want to see a, a fairly nice graph. 
So if you're trying to get nice full points on a quiz or a test, you can use this table to pick some other good coordinates that will fit nicely when you're graphing this. So we've already done negative 1 and we've done 0. We could also graph 1, 3. And then once we get to 2, we know we're already off the page. But you can also go backwards. And of course, you can use symmetry. We know that this point is 1 to the right of the axis of symmetry, so we should see negative 2, negative 3 pop up. And we do, negative 2, negative 3. And again, using symmetry, at negative 3, we should also be at a value of 3, which we do have just by using symmetry. They have to be equidistant on both sides. So now we already have a good representation of our graph. But there's one other thing we got to find, and that's our x-intercepts. Now, to do that, we are going to calculate something. Now, normally, you can use your calculator to calculate a zero. But a zero is going to use a left bound and a right bound and a guess. And then another left bound, a right bound, and a guess. One for each of your x-intercepts. So we know they're somewhere in this area. Now, your calculator needs or is going to be able to find the exact value for you. So what I want to do is go back and remind you what y equals 0 looks like. y equals 0 is a horizontal line where y is always equal to 0. So without seeing it on your graphing calculator, the x-axis has actually got a line y equals 0 sitting right on top of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell our calculator to just go find those intersections. It just makes it a little bit easier to do than finding zeros. So if you click second trace, which is the calculate menu again, we're going to go find the intersection. So that's number five. And all you have to do is take your little spider and put it right at one of your x-intercepts. And just get it somewhere close. You're not going to be able to get it perfect. It's just fine. So right there is perfect. And just click Enter three times. One, two, three. And it's going to tell you that one of your x-intercepts is at negative 2.58 comma 0. Because all x-intercepts are going to have a y value of 0. And that makes sense, because we think that after sketching it, it's somewhere between negative 2 and negative 3. And to do that one more time, we just click second calc, go to number 5, which is intersect, and this time, take your little spider and put them on top of the other x-intercept. And then just click enter three times, 1, 2, 3, and you have another one at .58 comma zero. All right, and that's it. That's all you really need to be able to do with your graphing calculator for now to find the important details. So we're going to take this a big step forward now. Now that you know how to use your graphing calculator, we can use it to answer a lot of application problems. So this question is saying that Joey kicks a soccer ball during a game, and the path of the ball can be modeled by the equation y is equal to negative 0 0.01 times x plus 12 times x minus 106 in terms of feet. x equals 0 represents midfield, so midfield is the middle line of a soccer field. Um, and we're going to use our graphing calculator and what we just learned how to do to answer a few questions. How far did he kick the ball? Which you probably already know that answer if you understand intercept form. What was the maximum height of the ball? And what was the height of the ball as it crossed midfield? So the first thing you're going to want to do is type the equation into y1 of your calculator. So that would be negative 0 0.01. And then in parentheses you have x plus 12. And then in another set of parentheses, you're going to have x minus 106. And then you're going to click graph. And that doesn't look like a parabola at all to you. And the reason why is because your window is back from negative 10 to 10 in both x and y direction. Well, you got to think about kicking a soccer ball. 
And if you understand intercept form, you kind of know where this is going to be. The intercepts are negative 12 and 106. So to use your calculator to change the window, you just click the window button. Now with more and more practice, you'll be able to decide. Sometimes you're going to need to guess and check. Sometimes you might not go left enough. Sometimes you might not go right enough. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my x minimum. That's how far left I'm going to go. And I'm going to change that to negative 20. And again, I know that the maximum is going to be 106. So I'm going to go a little bit past 110. Now again, as you get better at reading these equations, you'll be able to guess and check a lot quicker. Now our y minimum, you're not going to kick a soccer ball underground, but sometimes it's nice to be able to see the entire x-axis. And now I have no idea how high he's going to kick the ball. So we're just going to leave a y max of 10 and just see what this looks like. So you're going to click graph. And you'll notice that the parabola goes over the maximum height. So we're going to need to change. We can see the left, we can see the right, but we can't see the top. So we're going to need to change that. So we're going to go back to the window, and all we need to do is change the y maximum right now. So I don't know. Let's try 50 this time. Let's see if 50 is high enough. And when you click graph, you can see the entire path of the ball. So, by using what we just learned, you can find how far he kicked the ball, you can find out the maximum height, and you can find out what the height of the ball was when it crosses midfield when x equals 0. So let's do that. How far did he kick the ball? Well, again, we're in intercept form, so we know that the intercepts are going to be from negative 12, comma, 0, and it's going to land at 106, comma, 0. From negative 12 to 106, that is a distance of 128, I'm sorry, 118 feet. Now, using our graph and calculator, though, if you forgot how, remember the y equals 0. All you would need to do is press second calc, go find number 5, the intersection, and I'll show you how to do it for one of them again in case you forgot. But you just take your little spider and you get close to the left. And you're going to end up clicking enter three times. And it's going to tell you that one of your x-intercepts is negative 12. Again, we were in intercept form, so that part was easy. To find out how high the ball went, you're going to press second calculate and this time we're going to go find the vertex at the top this is a maximum so it's going to ask us to do a left bound and a right bound so you're going to need to scroll over and get somewhere pretty close and click enter and then it says find the right bound so you're going to need to go Take your spider, sometimes this takes a minute for your calculator to move. And once you know that you're on the right side of the vertex, you click enter again. And then guess means you just go stand at the top. Click enter one more time. And you have a maximum at 47 comma 34.81 so we have 47 comma 34.81 now the height is y so the maximum height is 34.81 feet the last thing is what is the height when it crosses midfield that's when x equals 0 so you can just click second graph, look at the table, 0, 12.72. So the height was 12.72 feet as it crossed midfield. All right, that's how you use your calculator to do some analysis with parabolas. This is Longo and I'm out. See you, bye.